Okay, so if all the numbers are positive, that's a little bit easy. So we get to some of these where we have negative numbers, right? Um, how can I get negative numbers? That's why I reminded you this earlier. Okay, that's A, that's B, that's C. B is now a negative number. So B is negative 9. We need this to equal negative 9. Right? It's still 1 times 20, and we're still dividing by 1. Nothing has changed. But we just need it to be negative 9. Well, the factors of 20. 1 and 20, 2 and 10, uh, 4 and 5. However, like I said earlier, you can have negative parts in here. So if I have a negative 4, and I want to multiply it to get a positive 20, I need a negative 5 as well. Negative times negative is positive. 4 times 5 is 20. So that one equals negative 9. So this goes up here. This goes up here. Right? We got negative 4, negative 5. No big deal. So now I have... I used to write x plus, but this is going to be plus negative 4. So we just call that x minus 4. And we call that x minus 5. Right? So if the middle number is negative, if B is negative, but C and A are positive, then you need two negative numbers to give you that positive when it multiplies, negative when it adds. Right? I'll do another one. Negative 11, 24, we got 1 times that, divide by 1. Again, I'm writing that because tomorrow it will change. Right now, it's really easy. 1 and 24, 2 and 12, 3 and 8, 4 and 6. Which one equals 11? Well, that equals 11, but we want negative 11. So I need both of those to be negative. So again, when I put this up here, negative 8, negative 3, that's x minus 3, x minus 8. And you see some more examples where they do that, right? If we turn it over, um, let's skip down. It says 10 is still the same idea. Still same stuff. Uh, this one right here. Now B is positive, but we got 1 times negative 10. So that's negative, right? So if this is negative, I need one positive, one negative answer. Right? Uh, still 1 and 10, 2 and 5. I want it to equal positive 3. Well, I know when I'm looking at this, if I want a positive answer, I need the smaller number to be negative. Now, when I multiply negative 2 times 5, that gives me negative 10. And when I add these, it's 5 minus 2, which is 3. So this is x minus 2, x plus 5. Okay, um, if they do a different problem, so I'll go down and show you this one right here. This is negative 8 here, negative 9 here. Again, we're still multiplying by 1, dividing by 1. That doesn't change any of the answers. But when I factor that, I know I want a negative 8. That tells me that the negative number has to be bigger. So it's 1 times 9, 3 times 3. If this is a negative 9, when I multiply, I get a negative. But when I, and then when I add them, I get a negative. So now that's x. I'd still take these up, right? I don't want you to get too carried away. x plus 1 and x minus 9. Okay? When you need to factor, though, that's when you can use the, the calculator. If you do a graph, right? So like I saw a number up there that was 60 or 56. What are the factors of 56? I don't really know. But if I do the number divided by X and I hit enter, I don't care about the graph, but when I go to the table, these are the factors. 1 and 56, 2 and 28, 4 and 14. We don't use any of the ones that are decimals. If you need some negative numbers, go up. There's the negative numbers, right? If this number is negative and you put the negative in there, it'll work also, right? That'll help you a lot.